See, ladies and gentlemen, we get three to four thoughts a year that if we would act on those thoughts, they could change our life. Don't say, well, I'll, I'll remember that. No, write that thought down. I got a thought today I wrote down. A friend of mine is in the hospital. His morale is low. They're talking about amputating his foot. He's got to feel very bad. So I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm not only am I going to see him, but I can't be there with him all the time. I said, I'm going to create a tape for him that, that he can listen to that will heighten his level of morale. We told him the other night, don't go to surgery. You are depressed. Your energy level is down. No, no, tell him not now. Don't do it now. In fact, most doctors who have any sense of awareness don't perform surgery on patients that are in a state of fear, that don't think they will make it. They wait till they're in a different state of mind. So I said, what about making tapes for people that are facing physical challenges? I said, that's a good idea. All right. See, there are ideas that can come to you out of things that appear to be negative. I have a friend out of Chicago, just met him. He was 23 years old. And this guy, he went financially bankrupt two years ago, ruined his credit. Guess what he decided to do? He found a blessing in it. He wanted to restore his credit. It was very challenging, very difficult. And he realized that a lot of other people during these particular times have ruined their credit. So now he started a credit repair business. Last year, he earned over $100,000 helping people to restore their credit. I met a young lady who attends this church that she was at her father's funeral and, and she was putting flowers on her father's grave and she looked around and saw the other grave sites. They did not look well-groomed and they were not attended to on a regular basis. She started a grave site maintenance business. Out of that tragedy, something positive has come out of it. And now she's earning more money doing that than on her present job. What idea are you sitting on? Write your ideas down. And then, what idea are you sitting on? Write your ideas down. And then, once you get that idea, take the leap. Hello? Take the leap. See, a lot of people get the ideas and just walk around with them. Have you ever had an idea and all of a sudden you looked around and somebody had that idea and gone with it? <laughs> Think you're going to be going with my hospital idea. Forget that, buddy. We will be out there together, Jack. <laughs> take the leap. See, it's out here in the universe. If you don't take the plunge, I guarantee you, somebody else will. Take the plunge. Go into action. And ladies and gentlemen, you will be surprised at how things will come together. You'll be surprised now, you're gonna have some difficult challenges. I can tell you that now. Be aware of that. Things are not gonna work out exactly right. For a time they will, sometimes. And that's when life is just playing a game with you. I want you to feel good and relax. And then after a while, say, okay, the honeymoon's over now. And then life will come over there and slap you side to here. Say, what you doing out here? Well, this is my dream life, is that right? Come over here a minute. <laughs> oh, you went to the seminar, huh? Come here. <laughs> I can tell you that but ladies and gentlemen go into action with your dream and don't avoid where the fights are get in the midst of the fight and get some hickeys on your head get knocked down so you can learn how to fight so you can hold your position see most people don't get out in the arena of life because they don't want to fight most people don't get out there because they don't want to get knocked down. They don't want to be dropped to their knees. But see, you're going to be dropped whether you're on the field or whether or not you're sitting on the sidelines. You're going to be dropped. So at least get dropped for something. Don't get knocked down while you're sitting down. See, that's how most people are spectators in life. You don't want to be a spectator. You want to get out in the field where the action is. And you will be amazed. After the struggle, there will be a calm period and things will begin to click for you. Come out here with what you got. You don't have enough money? Don't worry about it. You got the dream. You got the idea. You don't have enough resources? Don't worry about it. You need some help? Don't worry about it. You get out here in the arena, someone will look at you and become inspired and say, Hey, can I help you? But if you're sitting up on the bleachers, nobody's going to ask you anything. You've got to get into the flow of action. Frances Hart called me from Chicago. She had been sitting on an idea of a show that she wanted to produce for 10 years called Mind Body Connection. 
So someone saw me speaking in Chicago at a sorority convention and said, I saw a guy that perhaps can host this show for you who has energy and charisma. She called me. She was so fired up. I said, listen, on the day that you want to do that, I'm speaking in Chicago. I can do it for you. And I said, by the way, I met somebody two weeks ago in Baltimore who has an idea of the same type of show and she's doing it on radio. Why don't you call her? And then she called me back. Who else would you suggest? I said, well, I know Deepak Chopra. He wrote the book called Quantum Healing and Bernie Siegel. Could you get his number? I tell you what, I have a friend named Jack Bolin at the Church of the Day. He knows how to get in touch with him. Call him and he will give you the number so you can get in touch with Bernie Siegel. That lady started calling all around, did not have the resources, but she had this idea and dream. And she said the other night when she came before the audience that had gathered in the studio, she said, I feel like I've been pregnant for 10 years. And this one was a little tough for me. He said, Mr. Owen, you've got pennies in your pocket. You've got nothing in the bank. The creditors are calling. You're behind on your promises. He says, here's how that occurs. You've attracted, up until now, you've attracted the things to you because of the person you've become. Now I said, well, how can I change all that? He said, very simple. If you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. Show said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my cell. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. And start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity if you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job. The thing that really, really helps is I've learned about the perspective to change my perspective. So for example, I show up to give and I always remind people that the, the most important thing about being an effective presenter, an effective speaker, is you have to show up with a giving attitude. You have to show up to give. You know something, you've seen something, you've done something, you've tried something that someone else thinks others need to hear. That's why they invited you to speak. The problem is the number of people who show up to take, to get. And you can see it, it's very plain to see. People ask a question and they say, you'll have to buy my book. Or you could just tell me the answer because you know the answer because you wrote the book, right? But clearly they're trying to drive book sales. It's a taking mentality. Every single slide of their PowerPoint has their Instagram, their email, their website, their Facebook. Well, clearly they want you to follow them. They want you to reach out. The last slide is their website and their email, right? They have a taking mentality. They come up and the first thing they do is tell you their credentials. Hi, my name is, you know, Dr. Blah, -de blah I have six PhDs. I've worked for 55 companies. I advise CEOs and generals. And let me tell you a little something. It's about them. It's very easy and very quick to discern who's the giver and who's the taker. The best speakers, 100% of them, you look at all the top TED folks, you know, Sir Ken Robinson, Amy Cuddy, Brene Brown, right? Dan Pink, all of them. All of them are there to give.